I, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I actually, I am an addict. But my addiction isn't like alcohol or drugs. Uh, my addiction is soda pop. Whenever I tell people that, I get that kind of response. And I'm not gonna lie, you're not helping the problem, okay? You're making it way worse. A lot of people are always like, oh, that's not a real addiction. That's not nearly as bad as drugs and alcohol. Beg to differ. <coughs> Beg to differ. If you ever ask anybody who's addicted to drugs and alcohol, you ask them about their story, it always starts the same. It's always like, oh, in the beginning, drugs and alcohol was amazing. They brought me out of my shell. I had such a good time. And then they started to spiral, you know? And then things got bad. At no point in time was I ever having fun doing pop, okay? <laughs> One day I just woke up and I started getting headaches if I didn't drink it. And now I'm gonna have diabetes and less teeth in two years. <laughs> Where's my support group, okay? <laughs> Big Bird died recently, you guys seen this? <laughs> Big Bird's dead, actually played Big Bird. You know he almost blew up in the Challenger explosion? It's true, Big Bird, yeah. NASA was trying to get kids involved, you know, into space. They're trying to get kids into space. But at some point they realized that the bird suit didn't fit inside the space suit. So they had to pivot. They were like, oh man, we can't use Big Bird. What's the second thing that kids love the most? Teachers! That's what they love. Kids love teachers. So they, you know, they sent that teacher to space. Or close to space. <laughs> wonder, you know, what if the United States government had actually blown up Big Bird? How would we have blamed it on Russia? <laughs> We're living in weird times, man. Weird out there. Like, you guys ever wonder if, like, this world is even real? Like we're just living in a big simulation. So nobody in here's done acid. <laughs> Got a bunch of sober nerds at the Sunday party today. Okay. But just so you guys know, it's not just a bunch of you know me. It's not just me and a bunch of ravers who think this anymore. Actual scientists are starting to believe that this whole thing. Might just be one big computer program, you know? This whole thing might just be one big old video game. I think the worst part about that, if it's true, is the fact that I'm clearly not the main character of this video game. <laughs> I'm not even one of the side characters you can use in multiplayer mode, you know? <laughs> like, I'm not even Luigi. <laughs> And honestly, I would settle for being Waluigi. <laughs> Pretty sure I'm one of the villagers that Link just throws chickens out. <laughs> uh, great simulation, you guys. And it's weird out there, you know? It's weird right now. Like, it's, to me, it's weird that, like, a 16-year-old girl has to, like, tell, like, world leaders, like, Hey, littering's bad, you guys! <laughs> it's weird. The, the weird part isn't the fact that like world leaders don't care about the world, you know? That's not that surprising. The surprising part is the fact that like high schoolers are actually like smart and aware now. Like when I was in high school, everybody was so dumb, we thought what happened in high school actually mattered, you know? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 
And you always hear people now like, how did it get this bad? You know, how did it get like this? How did Trump become our president? Time travel, you guys. <laughs> Give me a shot, okay? <laughs> CNN told you how he got elected. Now hear what I got to say. <laughs> I got a microphone. <laughs> All right, I'll lay it out. Trump's uncle was a high-level scientist for the government. And when Tesla died, the FBI hired Trump's uncle to go confiscate all of his inventions and schematics for inventions. Now, I'm not saying that I'm positive that Trump's uncle stole the time machine from Tesla and Trump used that time machine to win the 2016 election, a la Biff from Back to the Future. <laughs> you know, I'm not positive that that happened, but it makes about as much sense as anything else that I've heard, you know? <laughs> and honestly, it's a lot more fun to think like, oh, time travel won Trump the election. Then to think like, oh, racism won Trump the election. Time travel is a lot more fun, you know. Maybe it's just me. I like time travel. I'm a big fan of racism. I think one of the things that, that is good about him being president, though, is a lot of more people are like aware of what's going on, you know. A lot more people are getting involved in causes, which is good, you know? But I think some people are getting involved in causes that don't really matter. Like, I'm not real sure that anybody really needs, like, Soda Pop Anonymous, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but one of the causes that I used to worry about a lot, actually, that I don't worry about anymore, is the bees. Yeah. I don't worry about the bees, you guys. And that's just because, due to pollution, China's already lost their bees. And they're doing great. China's killing it right now. Especially in Hong Kong, you know. <laughs> killing it. I'm sure you're wondering now, like, they don't have any bees, you know, like, how do they have any fruit? How are they producing any crops? I'm not gonna lie, there's a real simple solution. They just replaced all their bees the Chinese people. <laughs> they thought about importing Mexicans to do the work, but they realized the import costs would have been crazy. <laughs> Just wouldn't have made business sense.